In today's tutorial we're going to be looking at masking in Sony Vegas Pro 10. Um, it should also be good for Sony Vegas Pro 9 and Pro 8 and probably uh, additions before that. Okay so to begin with we have a clip of a bear which you can see um, in this uh, main window here and also in this window. Um, so what you need to do first of all is um, if you didn't have any clip in your uh, in your um, timeline you need to select it from your uh, explorer window and drag your clip in um, now I'm not going to do that because I already have my clip in the box here so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to copy my clip um, because I need to drag my clip or paste it in rather below um, the original clip so I now have two of the same clip so all I did was copied the original clip and I pasted it in and I aligned it directly below. Now we're going to see why we've done that um, later on. Um, but for the moment we're just going to select the initial clip again by clicking on it and I'm going to go to the event pattern crop symbol on my clip. So if you look at this sort of square icon and if you click on the event pan crop uh, setting it will uh, bring up this window here. Now this window was already up um, just by coincidence. Um, so if I click on it and you see fry stuff it up, it's already opened up. So if you didn't have that opened up, it will open up. Now, what you need to do next is, because if you want to mask, uh, create a mask around an object, in this case the bear, um, is you select the anchor creation tool on the left here. So you see it's annotated there, anchor creation tool. So we click that and now we click around the object we want to mask so in this case the bear and you can be as accurate or as inaccurate as you like um, it's personal preference depending on what you're doing um, so right now I'm not being very accurate as you can see uh, just clicking quite randomly around the bear uh, you can zoom in and out with the mouse wheel as well so if you want to get more accurate in your um, in your masking you can uh, you can go quite precise I can zoom all the way into the pixel level, so I'm just going to zoom out. Again, that's with if you have a mouse um, wheel um, on top of your uh, on top of your mouse. So going back to this, I'm clicking, and now I want to close the mask. So you must close the mask; it's crucial. You can't just um, create a line. You need to create a loop of some sort. Um, so if I click on the first part of my uh, mask chain that I was creating so if, you, if I take the cursor away you can see there's a gap there so I click on the first part the original um, point I clicked on uh, to close the chain now you see it's closed the area um, around the bear is, is darkened out because I've created this mask so what you want to do next is really up to you and depends on what the purpose of your mask is. I'll just show you um, some examples of what the mask is doing first of all. So if I move uh, the clip out from the bottom here um, you can see that it creates this sort of uh, window effect. Now the reason why it's not around the bear is if you look here my, um, my uh, timeline um, point is not at the beginning which is where I did the initial mask. So if I bring it back there, um, it's back around the initial area um, that I masked. So if I click on, for example, mode here back in the event pan crop window, it's on positive. If I select negative, um, it inverts the mask and the area outside the bear is now on display. The bear is blackened out completely. If I drag this, um, second duplicated clip back in you will see that it replaces um, <coughs> the, the black area with with the bear so why do we duplicate the clip what's the point of this well the point is if we want to add in some effects um, which most people when they create a mask that's the purpose it might be a blur effect for example you need a duplicate clip to do that so if you kind of think of it as the mask is basically created like a hole in the clip you're now going to fill in that hole with the same clip um, because you don't want a hole because it's not very interesting um, in, in your clip um, so you're going to create some sort of effect to fill, fill in um, that blank space 
so if we click on video effects um, and for example here I have Gaussian blur selected you could select uh, deform you could select a uh, gradient map you could select anything you want um, to fill in your mask with um, so if we select Gaussian blur because that's quite a common one um, especially if you wanted to do some kind of tilt shift effect um, in this case we're not but if you did want to do that this would be the same similar kind of process um, so we drag that down then to um, the top clip so if I just do that again because it wasn't very clear so I'm going clicking on my left clicking on my uh, medium blur holding that down as I drag to the top um, clip so now it's opened up um, the uh, video event effects um, window where I can change the amount of horizontal or vertical um, blur that I have. I'm going to keep it as it is for this example um, but you can slide uh, both horizontal range and vertical range to the desired point. Now there's a slight problem here because when I was showing you the mode um, it was on positive and I forgot to change it back so it's on negative right now so the area around the bear is blurred out rather than the bear itself so if we want to blur the actual bear out which is what it was um, on by default until I changed it and we click positive so now the bear is blurred out as you can see okay so there's various other things you can do uh, if you look at the opacity uh, you can change that um, so you can, uh, we're going to leave it as it is, but you can change the opacity of, of the actual blur, in this case, of the effect that you've created in the mask. So if we put it back to 100, just type that in. Um, feather type, um, so feather is basically to blend in, in this case, the blur with the surrounding area. Um, so we can have um, both um, the outside and inside um, of the mask um, sort of feathered. Um, and if we increase that to say 12 um, it will uh, make it look a little bit neater you can't really see the difference there but it, it just kind of makes it look a little bit uh, nicer less dramatic uh, the change between the mask and the surrounding area and uh, looks more natural okay so there's a variety of other things you can play around with and um, if you want to move um, your mask um, you can do that by moving the keyframes um, down here so if I click on on um, on this bit here you can see that suddenly the blur no longer covers the bear because I've changed to a different frame so there's ways of changing that which I'm not going to go into right now they'll be explored in a further tutorial um, it's not that complicated but for the purpose of time I think uh, we'll just leave it at that for this tutorial Okay, so I hope that was helpful. If you have any comments or questions or suggestions, um, please comment in the uh, box um, below um, in the comment section. And uh, also check out my um, blogs, which are listed in the description section. Um, and uh, take a look at those. And also please like this video um, if you do like it so that more viewers can see it. Okay, thanks very much. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope this tutorial has been useful.